that everyone is here. One of the highlights of my week, every week, is Wednesdays. Because right here. You cannot come on Wednesday night, spend some time here, and leave crabby or sad. Because these kids are amazing. They are so much fun. And they love Jesus, and that's what we're here for. And so tonight, we have a special way of telling you about Christmas, and we are very glad you're here. And to kick things off, we thought it would be appropriate to have Pastor Mike start with a prayer. Did you know you were going to do that? Surprise. <laughs> are you guys about ready? Are you guys excited? Do you think they're excited? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we are so thankful that you're all here. Uh, during the presentation tonight, there are going to be some songs that are congregational as well. So if you see words on the screen, feel free to sing along with them. A lot of the songs, they will do the first verse uh, as themselves, and then we'll join in as well. So if you see the words on the screen, feel free to sing along with us. Let's open with a quick word of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the chance to come together this season to celebrate Christmas and the gift of your son. Lord, what an amazing opportunity it is to, to celebrate these young children and the witness that they have in this world. How they bring so much joy to us and how they can spread your message of love in ways we could never imagine. Be with all of them tonight. Help us to enjoy this pageant. But most of all, God, help us to represent you in all that we say and do. In your name we ask it. Amen. Yeah. 
us right here on your favorite streaming channel. I'm so excited to be with you again for another season of Sweet Treats. And boy, is this season going to be the best. It's Christmas after all, and over the next four episodes, we're going to be baking cookies. But this wouldn't be the most the sweetest things Christmas edition without our special guest star. He's the star of the holiday classic. The one about the green guy who starts such a holiday. You know him, you love him. What? Well, why not? Oh, okay. Changing the program, kids. We will not be joined by the green fuzzy holiday icon. And so we'll be joined by another animated hero. He's the boy with the dog. The boy with the saddest Christmas tree ever. The boy with the round head, who swears what a blanket teaches the real meaning of Christmas. What? Seriously? You couldn't have told me this when you told me about it? <laughs> Okay, well, who do we have? No, you're kidding, right? For real? Uh, kids, I'm really sorry about this. We will not be eating cookies with the little boy with the dog. Still, we'll be eating cookies with a, a successful entrepreneur and businessman from Victorian England. Please welcome Ebenezer Scrooge. Welcome to the show, Scrooge. That's Mr. Scrooge to you, Becky. Mr. Scrooge, we're so happy you could join us. I'm not, but my agent says it will be good for my public image, so here I am. <laughs> Check it out, Kitty. Ebenezer Scrooge is a special guest star for today's baking show. Scrooge? Oh, no. I thought we were going to see the green guy. I sure hope he doesn't ruin the cookies. He hates Christmas so much. Yeah. I bet he gets a lump of coal for Christmas every year. Scrooge, do you like Christmas cookies? Bah humbug. I thought so. Christmas cookies, another pitiful excuse not to bake bread for the poor. This is going to be a long season. But since I'm being paid to come here and act jolly, by all means, <laughs> let's make some cookies. Mr. Scrooge, do you know this? the secret ingredient to making perfect Christmas cookies? Keep the urchins out of the kitchen so they don't eat them all? No. Well, I find that a good cane is used for chasing off whippersnappers. You need to have all the right ingredients. Ingredients? Like what? Well, a simple sugar cookie uses flour, eggs, butter, vanilla, baking soda, baking powder, and sugar. Sugar? Did you say sugar? I did say sugar. I don't think I've had any food that included sugar since the olden days, when I went to parties at Fizzywig's place. That's so sad. It is? Mr. Scrooge, sugar is what makes the cookie sweet. I see. So if we leave out the sugar, the poor little urchins will leave them alone. But you can't have Christmas cookies without sugar any more than you can have any more than you can't have Christmas without all the characters of the nativity. Nativity? Is that the delicious treat Fezzy Vixada used to make out of egg whites? You're thinking of divinity. I'm talking about the nativity, the true story of Christmas. You know, Mary and Joseph, the angels, the three shepherds who came in from the fields. They came in from the fields? And left the sheep alone? Why would they do that? They should all be fired. They came because the angel invited them to see the most important ingredient of all, the baby Jesus, you know, the son of God. Why, I haven't heard about him since the olden days when I went to parties at, wait, when Fezzy Books used to read the story from the Gospel of Luke. You, you can't have Christmas cookies without sugar any more than you can have Christmas without Jesus. He's the reason the season, the, Christmas season is so sweet. Oh, is he? You make it sound like this Jesus invented sugar. Well, actually, he kind of did. What? I mean, he is creator of all good things. Seriously? Well, folks, we have all the right ingredients for a simple sugar cookie. Join us next time when we really turn up the heat.
Making your own Christmas cookies is a fun way to bring the family together this season. All you need is flour, eggs, butter, baking soda, baking powder, vanilla extract, and of course sugar to make this a sweet treat. The recipe for a sweet Christmas is simple too. In fact, you can find all the ingredients on Luke chapter 2. There's Mary and Joseph who were called to be earthly parents to God's son. There are shepherds with their sheep and the angel who announced their birth to some shepherds. Most important of all, there's baby. There's a baby lying in a manger who came to make life sweeter for all of us. Of all the sweet things we can enjoy at Christmas, nothing is sweeter than knowing Jesus came to save us from sin. As we enjoy our sweet treats this season, may each one remind us of the sweet baby in the manger. To the and welcome back to the Sweetest Things Christmas Edition. I'm your host, Becky, and with me once again, for no good reason, is Ebenezer Scrooge. I beg to differ with you, young lady. There's an excellent reason I am here. Really? You hate Christmas. You hate everything about the holiday. You humbug everything. Give me one good reason why you're here and not Buddy the Elf. Because unlike Buddy the Elf, I'm in the public domain. Bah, humbug. See, you can say that all you want and the copyright attorneys won't get upset. Let's just keep making the cookies, okay, pal? That's Mr. Pow to you, Becky. I'll stick with Mr. Scrooge if that's okay. Whatever you like, let's just make some cookies. Mr. Scrooge, we have a batch of cookies all ready to form. Would you mind rolling it out for me? Roll it down the hall? That's not sanitary. No, I mean roll it flat with a rolling pin. Sounds like work for a commoner. Remember, your agent said it would be good for your public image. Bah, humbug. Check it out, kitty. Scrooge is, Scrooge is actually making the cookies. He doesn't fool me. He's still a Christmas hater. He's nothing but a big old meanie, and he will never change. I don't, I don't know, kitty. I mean, I don't know, kitty. I mean, Jesus did came to save everyone from sin. But not screwed, right? I don't know. He, he, I don't know. He didn't say anybody but Scrooge. But do you really think anything can change Ebenezer Scrooge? Thank you. As soon as you have it nice and flat, we'll start forming it. For me, these cookies with these cookie cutters. What sort of cookie cutters? Holiday cookie cutters, of course. I have a bell and a snowman and a Christmas tree. 
Are we really going to make cookies out of shapes like those corny things? Of course we will. You don't think round's good enough? Round is perfectly fine, Mr. Scrooge, but these cookie cutters will bring our holiday into focus, kind of like the wise men did when they visited the baby Jesus. The wise guys? The wise men. They were scholars who followed a they were scholars who saw a star in the sky and followed it to visit the baby Jesus. They couldn't be that wise. If they were, they wouldn't want to see a baby. All they do is eat, cry, and mess their diapers. I already told you Jesus was no ordinary baby. He was God's son. That's why they brought him gifts. What sort of gifts? Passies, baby clothes, a bumble seat? No, no, no. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They took those gifts to a baby? Yes. Those aren't gifts for a baby. Those are gifts for a king. Aha! Now you see the story taking shape. I see some so-called wise men. I see them giving gifts to a baby, a baby who was already visited by a shepherd. Shepherds, because an angel told them, say, this baby has, must have been someone special. That's what I keep trying to tell you. But I hope they get to get the, but, but I hope they gave the gifts to his parents and not directly to him. Gold coins could choke a kid. I'm really starting to see why three ghosts came to visit you. Ghosts, don't believe in them. I have a feeling you will, and I have a feeling you'll figure out why this is Christmas season is so sweet soon enough. I gotta admit, I'm curious to know more. Well, folks, we have all the... We... Wait. Well, folks, our Christmas cookies are taking shape, and so is our Christmas story. Join us next time when we really turn up the heat. <clears throat> Do we need cookie cutters to make our Christmas cookies? Do they make the cookies taste any sweeter? No, not at all. Once they hit our tongues, they all taste the same. But let's be honest, cookies that look like snowman, snowflakes, Christmas trees, and gingerbread men make the holidays sweeter. It's not the taste, it's the symbol that reminds us of the sweet, sweet time of the year we're enjoying. Jesus is just a baby when we meet him in the Gospel of Matthew, but his true identity starts to take shape when the wise men arrive. They bring gifts fit for king, gold and precious spices that a myrrh carpenter and his wife could never afford. These gifts teach us that Jesus is king. He is the king of kings, and if we put our trust in him, he will be our kings forever.
Jane's Christmas edition. I'm your host, Becky. And Okay. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Sweetest Things Christmas Edition. I'm your host, Becky, and with me once again, everybody's favorite Scrooge. I guess that's because he's the real Scrooge, Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge. He 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 hello, Becky. Hello, Becky? Wow, that's the first time you've actually been cordial to me. It is? Oh, oh how rude of me. Mr. Scrooge, are you okay? Huh? Me? Of course I'm okay. You look like you've seen a ghost. Really? Did you see it too? See what? Nothing. Never mind. Did you hear that, Wally? Barley! I think Scrooge really saw a ghost. That's silly. There's no such thing as ghosts. There isn't a Christmas carol. This isn't a Christmas carol. This is real life. A Christmas carol is just made believe. Excuse me, kids. I'm looking for Ebenezer Scrooge. Who are you? I'm the ghost of Christmas past. He's over there. He's over there. I think he's live on TV right now. He is? Okay, I can wait outside. Did you hear that, Wally? The ghost of Christmas past. Do you know what that means? Yes, either ghosts are real or they were just made believe. Really? You want to make the cookies? That's what we're here for, right? We're baking cookies. You're right. Although sometimes the cookies don't make it to the oven. They, they don't? No. Cookie dough is sweet, and a lot of folks like to eat it raw. That's crazy. You can't eat raw cookie dough. It got raw eggs in it. Exactly. That's what we need to guard and protect these cookies from. Ghosts? I was going to say people who want to eat them raw. Well, they can't have them. And not because I'm the sindiest man on earth. Well, I am the sindiest man, but this is an issue of public health. You know when, you know, Mr. Scrooge, after Jesus was born, someone tried to put an end to Jesus' life before it had really begun. Really? King Harold was very jealous when he heard a newborn king was in his kingdom that he even tried to capture and kill the baby Jesus. Ha, and they see it. And they say I need to pay a visit from three spirits. Did you hear that, Marley? Why don't you pay a hair to visit? <laughs> Why don't, uh, wait, you know hair is long dead, right? That's what I thought about Mommy until an hour ago. But hair wasn't able to stop God's plans. God protected Jesus like a wise baker protecting the raw cookies. So no one will get sick from eating the cookie dough. No, so that one day, Jesus could save the whole, the whole world from sin and every bad, selfish, evil thing we've ever done. Is this true? Jesus can really save us from our past sins? Pretty sweet news, huh, Mr. Scrooge? The sweetest thing I've ever heard, dear Becky. Here's a hard, hard truth. Cookie dough is not a finished good. I know it tastes just as sweet as baked cookies, but raw cookie dough can actually make you sick. A dedicated cookie baker knows they have to protect the raw cookies so they can get them into the oven, give them a little heat, and finish preparing these sweet treats. Jesus and his family faced some heat when he was still a child. Herod turned up the heat when he tried to hunt the baby down. Jealous there was another king in his kingdom, but like a good cookie baker, God protected Jesus. He got his son out of harm's way so that one day he could finish the sweet miss mission God gave him and save us.
welcome back to the Sweetest Things Christmas Edition. I'm your host, Becky, and as you can see, I'm alone. I'm not exactly sure what happened to Mr. Scrooge, but based on what I saw in the last episode Merry on Christmas, Becky! Merry Christmas, studio audience! Merry Christmas, children's choir! Mr. Scrooge! Merry Christmas, you wonderful old savings and loan! Check it out, kitty. Scrooge looked like a changed man. Do you think the ghost changed him? I don't know. He looks like he's been changed by something bigger than a couple of ghosts. Mr. Scrooge, are you okay? I've never been better, dear Becky. It's Christmas time. Don't you know it's the... Wait. It's... Don't you know it's the sweetest time of the year? I do, but... Oh, look, the cookies are finally done, and it looks like you're about to ice them. I was thinking about it. You know, you know, Becky, some people don't think cookies needs, need icing. Some people think they are incomplete without them. But you know what I say? Bah humbug. I say it doesn't matter how you eat your cookies. The sweetest part of the Christmas season is knowing that Jesus is all we need. It is? Oh, come on, Becky. You're the one who's been, teach, be, been teaching me about Jesus the last four episodes. You told me that Jesus came in came from heaven and he is God's son. And how sweet is it is that nothing, not even King Herod, could stop God's plans. I did say those things. But the one thing you didn't tell me is that Jesus is all we need. He can forgive our sins, he can give us new, uh, he can give us new life, he can give us eternal life, and, all be and he wants to do it all because he loves us. You see, Kitty, he's, he, you see, Kitty, he was changed by something bigger than ghosts. Something not at all make-believe. Oh, Mr. Scrooge, you really have learned the true, true meaning of Christmas. I have, Becky, and I want everyone to know about it. Did you really get all that from the three spirits who came to visit you? No, not a bit. But after they left, I sat down and read the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is the Word, Becky. He's the final Word. He doesn't need any icing. He's all we need. So you don't want to ice these cookies? I never said that, Becky. Let's ice those Christmas cookies. Let's deck the halls and put a sweet, some sweet icing on this holiday. But let's do it so knowing that all this sweetness is nothing compared to the sweet goodness of God who sent Jesus to be our Savior. Merry Christmas, Becky. And God bless us. Hey, that's not your line. That's Tiny Tim's line. And yes, he does own the copyright. Oh, good grief. Icing is often the crowning touch for a cookie. It is, is it necessary? No. Does it make the cookie sweeter? It could. Is it, it certainly adds more color and pizzazz. Some cookies don't need icing, but for the others, it is, the, it is a crowning touch on a sweet treat. If we believe in Jesus, we, we have all we need and ensure we will live forever. We don't need Jesus and anything else. We need, we just need Jesus. Jesus fulfilled every prophecy of the Old Testament about the Messiah. Jesus was a perfect man who made perfect sacrifices to save the imperfect sinners. He, he's done it all for us and there's no, and there's nothing we can do to learn the sweet gift he's, he offers us. There, the only thing is for us to is for us to do is to accept the gift he's given. Would you turn down a sweet treat like a lovely iced cookie? Not likely, right? Will you accept the sweet gift of eternal life Jesus offers you? Offers you? 
it is our prayer you will so that you can live life in all its sweetness. Well, this has certainly been a lot of fun. We had some good times. We ate some cookies, and we learned some valuable things. You mean the fact or just make-believe? No. Well, yes, but that's not the exciting stuff. We learned that Jesus is a perfect plan for our salvation. Yes, he is. He's a perfectly made cookie with icing on top. He's the only one who can save us from sin. He's sweeter than any cookie we will ever eat. And Ebenezer Scrooge is one great artist with a tube of icing. Yeah, that one really surprised me. But even that isn't as amazing as knowing that Jesus came to save the world from sin. Merry Christmas, Wally. Go ahead, say it. And God bless us every... Johnny Tim's line.
for being here, and uh, we are so grateful you guys could make it. We are very excited, and I think they did a good job, right? That was good. Thank you, Miss Marilyn. So just a few things. We have your kids. Please don't leave them. <laughs> They're waiting for you in the coffee room, so you can go get your kids, and we have cookies for you. Uh, they are for you, and there are a lot of them, so don't be shy. Grab as many as you want. And we'll see you back, well, your children back, January 10th, all right? We'll see you later, and Merry Christmas, and God bless us all.